Hello and welcome to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. On this week's show, we've got a couple of tastings. We're tasting Soju and we're also tasting the Bacardi Carta Fuego Spiced Rum. We're having a talk about blindfolded flair. We're having a listen, an exclusive listen, to a clip from the music that I'll be using at the Masters of Flair competition and much, much more. So let's get on with the show. Thanks for listening to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at Bartender HQ. So first of all, this week I've been lucky enough to try a couple of uh, new spirits, and the first one is Soju. Now, I may have mentioned this on a previous show, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, Soju is the world's number one selling spirit. Um, so it sells more than vodka, like way more than vodka, it sells way more than whiskey, gin, anything else. This is the world's biggest and you've probably never heard of it. I certainly hadn't until a few weeks ago when it came up on some sort of weird BuzzFeed type thing um, and I was like, I was blown away. I was like, I've never heard of this thing. So it's a Korean uh, liquor. It is 25% alcohol by volume uh, and uh, Actually, let's go straight to the video uh, where I was tasting it. This is when I had my literally my first taste as soon as we'd opened the bowl. Okay, a lot more tape than I expected. Let's try this out first. So the first one that we have is Jinro 25. This is uh, this is Soju, which is from Seoul in Korea, imported Korean liqueur, and this is the number one selling spirit or liqueur worldwide this trumps smirnoff vodka trumps all of the big brands and most of us have never heard of it so we're going to have a little taste of that in a minute and for the moment of truth now this is the jinro which i've only read horror stories about how this stuff tastes but as the world's number one selling liqueur surely surely this has got to be nice uh, so we're going to try this yeah, that, that's the seal breaking. Oh, it smells wonderful. Now, this isn't chilled or anything. It's a little bit probably below room temp. But I'm only going to try a little taste. And let's see what delights we have. So, Soju Jinro. 25, I don't know what the 25 means, could be the ABV. It smells like cheap vodka. It's not rough. Okay. Now to say that that is um, to say that that's room temperature, that's straight from the bottle, this isn't chilled glass, anything like that. Uh, that basically tastes kind of vodka a little tiny bit of sweetness at the end, uh, but otherwise it's kind of like quite a smooth vodka. Um, I've heard that it gives you a cracking hangover, so I'm not going to have a great deal today, um, because I've got an early start in the morning. But, first impressions, it's not too bad. Uh, it's not as bad by any means as I thought. So check out this week's bartenderhq.com podcast to find out a little bit more. Uh, if you want to see the Stolly bottles, the tiny little ones, and see what we're going to be doing with those in action, then you need to follow theflareproject.com. Uh, go over there, sign up, drop us your email address, and you will get all the updates, and I would love your contributions. So join us in the Flare Project. So, what should I make with my soju? Uh, drop me a message through bartenderhq.com. You can click the Ask Me a Question button at the top um, or go to the contact page. If you ask me a question, you'll leave me a voicemail and I will play it on the podcast as well. And uh, maybe I'll find you a prize of some sort. We'll have a look. Um, but do that and uh, don't forget to check out theflareproject.com. Now, as I mentioned in there, uh, I'd only read horror stories about how this stuff tastes. Um, surprisingly enough, it doesn't taste that bad. It's it's quite smooth. Could be due to the low alcohol content. Um, 
it is kind of like a slightly sweet vodka uh, kind of flavour to it. Can't really describe it in terms of any other spirit. Uh, but yeah, not unpleasant at all. Not 100% sure how I'm going to mix this yet, uh, what we're going to make with it. But over the next week or so, I'm going to try a few drinks out and we'll see exactly what we can make with this thing. Now, the second uh, the second drink that we tried this week is the Bacardi Carta Fuego. Uh, now, this is billed as their new spice rum. It's designed as a shooter for guys, uh, suggested to be mixed with Tabasco to make it a kind of really fiery shot. So, I tried this out with Dave Chivalaris. If you remember, he supplied one of the first moves for the Flare project for me. Uh, he's a TJ Friday's bartender, and uh, it was in stock at Reflex, so we gave it a little taste. Uh, so it's David here, uh, David from bartenderhq.com, and we're having a first taste of the Bacardi Carta Fuego. Uh, now this is one of the new style Bacardi bottles that's come out, uh, like the Carta uh, Carta Blanca and the Carta Negro, which is also available now. And we're just going to have a little taste. Uh, we've got a little bit. It's supposed to be quite spicy, so let's see. It smells. That's a lot smoother than I expected. Yeah, I was expecting a lot harsher. Now, Bacardi have uh, said a lot about this. It's supposed to be like a shot for guys, um, maybe mix it with Tabasco, that kind of thing. Um, so it's got, it's like a spiced rum, but it has got a little bit of heat to it, back of the throat. What do you reckon, Dave? It's, I, I agree, it's a lot smoother than I thought it was going to be. Um, the, the spice isn't, doesn't hit you in the face, it sort of goes down quite well afterwards. Yeah, it's a pretty nice thing. Quite mixable, I would say, as well. Um, it's going to be nice in uh, a map the rat. Possibly a couple of zombies. Yeah, some nice zombies. So, uh, cool. Just a quick first taste for you guys of the Bacardi Carta Fuego. Okay, so, uh, yeah, not quite as spicy as I expected. It is more like a traditional spiced rum along the lines of your Bacardi Oak Hearts before it and your, your Captain Morgan Spiced, that kind of flavour. I was expecting it to be a bit more kind of like a rum version of Fireball or some sort of one of those whiskey, spicy whiskey kind of uh, shooters. Um, didn't really get that from it. It's got a bit of a back of the throat burn that happens afterwards. I really like my spicy food. And uh, I challenge any of you companies out there, if you've got a spicy liqueur, a spicy whiskey, a spicy sambuca, whatever you've got, if you think it's too spicy for me, send it to me. I'll taste it on the show. Uh, you'll see my uh, genuine reaction. And, I mean, we'll get the word out there because I want some spicy stuff. If I go to Nando's, I'm going for that extra, extra hot sauce. They've got a 2X in a black bottle that makes it look dangerous. It's not spicy enough for me. I need really spicy. Okay, so my music is chosen for the Masters of Flair competition. Uh, as I mentioned on a show a couple of weeks ago, I think, the Masters of Flair is a little bit of a longer routine than the Roadhouse, so I actually need seven minutes of music for this. It's a six-minute routine making three drinks. Uh, two are working flair, one is mixology out of those two, and then one is exhibition flair at the end. The final minute, the seventh minute, is... Uh, their big ass move section so it doesn't need to be particularly choreographed to that you get three attempts to hit your biggest move um, so this music that you're hearing in the background as we speak this is uh, the music that I will be flaring to uh, it's two tracks that I've murdered together I'm gonna use the word murdered because I am not an audio engineer anything like that but these are two tracks by an artist called metronome who does a bunch of remix stuff online uh, you can find his stuff, I believe it might even be in iTunes, his remixes. But the first remix is the iPhone remix, so he's taken a bunch of iPhone ringtones, he's taken those tones, remixed it, added the beats, and then I think he's re-recorded them as well. He's used some Siri voiceover to fill in with it. It's a really cool track, and uh, I'm hoping that at the Masters of Flair, a whole bunch of people are going to reach for their phones right at the beginning of my routine, thinking their phone's going off, and in fact, it's part of my music. And then the second track uh, that I'm using is Breaking Bad Remix, again by Metronome. Uh, so he's taken, a, again, a whole bunch of sound bites from the show, the theme music from the show, and he's created this track, which has got a real kind of dubstep feel to it. Um, dubstep music is so fun when you're flaring because it gives you so many opportunities to interact with the flare, time stuff to it. Um, I'm going to be throwing some bottles around at the West Midlands Flare Club on Sunday night. Uh, with this playing in my ears. Uh, this will be the first time I flare into this music. 
and uh, we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed the tempo and everything's fine. I haven't got to mess around with all that stuff. Uh, but thank you to Metronome who's given me uh, permission to use the track and chuck it on the, uh, the YouTube videos and things afterwards. So thank you very much. You're a top guy. Uh, and I sent him one of the videos uh, of my skate park flare and he was quite impressed as well. So happy days. Uh, fingers crossed he'll get something you can use promotionally as well. So, Blindfolded Flare. I published an article this week on why Blindfolded Flare is such a wicked idea. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, this is going to be no good for me. I work in a high volume bar and uh, I haven't got time to do that sort of thing where I pull on a blindfold and, and try and do a kind of show of blindfolded flaring. Don't worry about that. This is not why I have this in my repertoire. I have used the Blindfolded Flare as a climax to a flare routine before. It might creep into the big ass move section of Masters of Flare, not quite sure yet, but I've certainly used it in other competitions and it looks fantastic, but the main reason that I would suggest that you learn to flare blindfolded is because then you're not focusing on your bottles, you are focusing all of your attention, you can keep eye contact with your guests, you can create that connection with your guests, and creating that cr connection with your guests that is what's going to earn you tips. That's going to earn you so many more tips than if you're taking an order, then flaring, then pouring the drinks, then giving them out. If you can make eye contact and you can be physically connected to that guest, holding a conversation while these bottles are essentially dancing around you, that is such a strong thing. That just shows that you are a master of your craft. And you're not going to be doing it blindfolded as I say. You're just going to keep eye contact with your guest and be able to use the fact that you don't need to look at those bottles all the time uh, to give you the chance to make that connection. It's a huge thing, it's so powerful, and I really hope that you guys get something out of this. Now I'm going to stick some uh, video up here on the screen, and this is from some flair that I did just before recording this podcast. Uh, it is currently 11 o'clock at night, it was about half 10 when I went outside, and uh, it's pitch black here in the UK at that time of night. So the only light that is on me at this point is uh, one photography lamp, uh, photography lamp, which was sat just next to the tripod for the iPhone, uh, and also the iPhone camera itself, uh, which has its flash turned on. Um, that's the only light that's on me and the only light that there is. So I'm looking at the back of very dark bottles. Um, I'm going to put it up uncut as well, so you will see me uh, actually dropping some stuff here. Um, but you will also see that without really being able to see these bottles, I'm not dropping a lot. Um, I can't see the bottle, I can't really see the tin. Um, I can kind of see the outline of them every so often. There's certain times when it goes completely blank. And, uh, and I've also got the blinding lights in my eyes. Now this is one of the things that I also use as preparation for competitions. So I will make everything as hard as possible during my practice sessions. So that on the night, if I get into a, uh, into a venue where the competition is going on. And the lighting is as bad as it can possibly be. Um, you know, no backlighting so that you can't really see your bottles. Um, if you've got just blinding lights in your eyes, if you've got all that sort of thing, you can still cope with it. You are comfortable and you've you've got used to the, the way of working around that sort of thing. Uh, the other things, um, I have got a Wicked article somewhere on the site. Uh, I'll pop a link to it up um, on 10 tips to improve your scores without learning a new move. And one of the other tips that's in there is actually wetting the bottles with uh, washing up liquid and water and just absolutely soaking your bottles um, so that you haven't you've got almost no grip on them and if you can still complete your routine with bottles in that state if you get a little bit of uh, water on your bottles during your routine you're not gonna have to stop and wipe them down you know that you can carry on and that you can cope with it so make your practice as hard as possible and uh, and you will see great results from that but yeah, check out the, the article on blindfolded flaring and its benefits and also 10 ways to improve your score. That was also featured on the World Flare Association's website. Cool, so that's going to be about it for this week's show. Get over to theflareproject.com, 
share anything that you see me posting on the Facebook page, any videos and that sort of thing. I'm trying to get this out to as many people as possible. I want to get the mainstream media involved in this later on in the project and I will uh, help you out as well. One of the other things that I'm going to mention is when we're getting towards this stage, uh, I'm going to tell you how to write a press release if you're doing a competition in your local area, how to um, get contacts with local radio stations and local potentially even local TV, which would be great, and then it kind of snowballs from there. Hopefully we'll get some national TV press for this Flare project before the end. That is the aim. I want to get more people to know about Flare bartending. I want to get more awareness of it in general. And if you've got a move for the Flare project, please, please, please get in touch. You can either tweet me the move uh, with a video link, with a YouTube link. You can email it to me, david at bartenderhq.com. I would love to hear from you. If you are signed up for the mailing list for the Flare project, you will also get the details through there, and you can just email me uh, a reply to any of the emails that you get sent through there. It will get to me, and we can feature it. In the meantime, followers in all the usual places, you know where they are now. It's Facebook, it's Twitter, it's Instagram, it is the YouTube channel. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. Subscribe on YouTube, subscribe in iTunes. There's two videos that have gone up this week that aren't going to be necessarily featured in the podcast. One was the tasting on Soju, the other was the unboxing of the whole order because I've got some other fun treats in there as well. And I'd love to get your feedback and I'd love you to be subscribed. Leave us a review on iTunes, love to read them and uh, it helps us get the word out to other people. So for now, that's it for this week. Find me on all the social stuff, have a chat, and we will talk. I'll see you next time on the bartenderhq.com podcast. Thanks for listening to the bartenderhq.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at bartenderhq. 